morning. Today we are no-tilling. Um, I don't have a tillage tractor, so we're no-tilling. Um, which this was going to be no-till regardless, but sprayed it the other day. As you can see, it's well burnt off. Uh, have a solid burn down program when it's warm outside. So I got it sprayed, got it killed off, and now we're going to get unfolded and start planting. Life's good so far. I got 25 acres done. Planting perfect. Variable rates working. Row shutoffs are working. Which I've only got row shutoffs on the back rows, not the front. So the front are always planting. Might add those later on. I don't know. But for right now, works just fine. There's the first 35 acres planted for the day. Got this side of the interstate done. And now we're going to hop over on that side of the interstate and plant. It's a 120 acre farm, but we're only going to plant like all but 70. So we're going to plant like 50 acres and that's it. But hey, it's still better than nothing. There goes my pickup and skid steer. He's been down here clearing driftwood out of here. And he's gonna go grab us both lunch, so that'll be nice. Have something to eat. So I'm in the last little bit here. Um, everything that's shaded blue is planted. I just got that little corner here. And then what's across the creek back there, but all that was chisel plowed and I don't have a tillage tractor, so it's gonna have to get worked before I can plant it, just to level it up. That ain't gonna be today, because the only tractor I have is this. So we're just gonna keep planting the ground we can go plant. It's supposed to rain tonight, depending on how much we get. I'll unhook this, hook onto the real disc, or the actual disc, or whatever, and uh, come down here, hit that real quick, level it up. I think there's like 50 acres over there, I don't remember, but. Um, get that done, and, uh, Help if the planter would pick up, Jesus. The remote was back, but the planter was not coming up. I don't know what's going on. Every now and then this tractor does that. I don't know what causes it, but every now and then. It's like one in a thousand times it'll be there. But uh, anyhow, planting away, auto steer doing its thing, and uh, yeah, just about done down here, and then we're going to head to the state ground and try and get some beans planted out there today. Really an absolutely gorgeous spot for a bathroom break. I mean, that Burger King that I got brought for lunch, I could only hold so long, and got to say, I feel a lot better now. And then I get back in here, and, you know, that's going nuts. Yes, I'm aware that I am not planting I am aware that these rows are not planting because we're not moving, so that'd be why. It never fails with an AB line that, uh, yes, I know they're not planting. They're not supposed to be. You're overlapping. It's a very annoying monitor sometimes, uh, especially when the row clutches are kicking in and out. But like I was saying, it never fails. We got one pass left and we're done back here. And guess what? We're leaving on that end of the field. And we're going to end up on that end of the field. So the furthest corner from the exit. It's always where you end up at when you're done. I mean, it, like clockwork, it just always works out that way. But uh, planting good back there. I've got out a couple times. I like my depth. I like how we're covering the sea really really like the job that those uh, Yetter Twist closing wheels are doing. Uh, I don't hate the job that the Copperheads are doing but those Yetter Twists just kind of flick a little more dirt into that sidewall. Um, whereas the Copperheads do a good job crumbling everything and covering it but I don't feel like they, I don't know, the Yetter Twists it seems like they're kind of busting up the sidewall that the openers make a little bit more than the copperheads do so I like that a little bit better but 
not a ton of difference between the two, but like I said, I do. I like the other twists a little bit more, but uh, one more pass and we'll have our first 75 acres today done. So can't beat that. I'm trying to get about a hundred more done today. And that's how we do that. Now for more seat and on to the next one. Well, we've got our first eight pro boxes planted now. Seed tenders completely empty. It ran out right on the last box of the planter. That doesn't happen very often that it works out that way, but that's the way it worked out. So I'm gonna make a phone call. Get four more coming. Or actually, I'm gonna get six more coming. I've got two boxes in the shop still. So I'm gonna double check what variety they are. It is extremely windy today, so we're definitely drying out. So we're gonna check, make sure that these are what I think they are. And they are, I think. Three eighths, yes. And three eighths, okay. So that's what's in the planter right now. So we're ready to keep rocking and rolling. I'm gonna grab myself a few drinks, get some Mountain Dew, get some water, maybe some dessert. Dessert for later, I can't talk. But uh, it's been a really productive day so far. Hopefully it stays that way. This is what happens when you're trying to put stuff up before it rains and you're too lazy to get out of your skid steer. You just pick it up with a skid steer and move it. Well, since it was too wet to plant, I did the next best thing. I know you can't see it because my lights quit working back there, but we went box blade. I uh, went and fixed two really, really, really bad washout ditches, and I think I fixed them halfway permanently until I can get some tile in it. So, hoping that it lasts through the year at least. And if it lasts through the year, then I can get a crop on it, plant it this year, and uh, next year, or next fall, uh, as soon as this field's going into corn, um, this is a 118 acre field, and all 118 acres needs tile. Not because it's poorly drained, but because it washes out so bad, it's super, super hilly. So, anyhow, that's what we're doing putting band-aids on bigger problems, but uh, for now, I'll be able to farm through most of them this year until I can get tile in and terrace some of them. But I bought this this year, so it's time to fix some of these issues and fix them right. All right, well, everybody's tucked in and put in the shop, so it's time to uh, call it a night, I guess, and head home. Got the lawnmower over there, ready to roll tomorrow. But, uh, been a good run the past few days, but we definitely got rain on the radar coming for us, so. Time to shut this place up, lock this place up, and head home. Morning. Today we are, hopefully, if I could walk and not gouge my eye on this antenna, uh, we're hopefully gonna finish spray and burn down uh the little bit that i have left it's gonna be pretty questionable um it is it's wet um it's the reason it's not sprayed yet but it's been drying out i may just mix half loads instead of full loads on the sprayer that way i've only got 500 gallon on instead of 10 or a thousand gallon so if that lightens me up five or six thousand pounds, then hopefully that's five or six thousand pounds that allows us to get across the field, hopefully. Uh, but I don't know. 
So we're going to risk it for the biscuit today and uh, see if we can't skimp across the field or not. So we've got our Gramoxone in there. Got our generic dual pumping into there right now. Got the meter on. Now all we got to do is add our 2,4-D and we'll be good to go. All right, we are hooked up. So let's try this tender trailer out for the first time and see how she runs. So I've been fighting the carburetor on that pump for like 15 minutes. Finally got ticked, went and got some ether, fired right up, but then it would die. Yeah, the carburetor wasn't the issue. The fact that it didn't have any gas in the gas tank would have been the issue. So uh, might start with checking that next time. Could have sworn I just filled it up the other day, but uh, apparently I didn't. I swore that it was full though. Apparently we got gas thieves around here. And these stupid farmers, I tell you what, they're always holding you up on the road. They won't pull over, won't get out of your way. Like some of us have places to be, you know. Got 30 acres of patches sprayed. This one was another one of those that you go around it twice and then make a pass back and forth and you're done. Actually, I went around it once and then went back and forth and we're done, so. It's like four acres. There's water standing in it everywhere, but didn't really cut many tracks, just where I turned. But uh, it is what it is, it's gonna die now. We have rain every day in the forecast next week, so I'm gonna hammer down and get as much done today as I can, because if I could get my spraying done at least, I'll be happy. I really don't wanna plant in front of a bunch of rain. Um, so I'm probably not gonna do that, but it is what it is. Um, plant what we can plant and uh, kind of go from there. Luckily this is the last state field I have to spray so this one's like five acres so we'll go around it and then go back and forth be done with it and uh, I do a lot of this spray a lot of trees or spray over a lot of trees they are pretty good about cleaning the trees up that fall in the field but there's been a few that they haven't got yet this year so um yeah we just hold the boom up over the top of them and make it work but not a very big field here but this is the last one out here and then i'll be done so i've got 100 acres um in two yeah they're roughly 50 acre fields that i ripped last year that i can't get in right now because it's muddy i might try with a half a tank and see what happens but it makes me nervous and then I've got like 40 acres at home, same thing, that I ripped, and I just, it's not gonna dry out. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about those. I'm gonna try and get them sprayed so they're at least dying, but that's if I can get across it. But that's why I'm saving them for last, because if I'm gonna bury the sprayer or tear something up, I wanna do it when I've got 100 acres left, not 1,000 acres left. So that's why I've saved them for last. Well, I tried. Um, I mixed up a... 200 gallon tank out of a thousand gallon just trying to get across this and we're stuck um it's not stuck bad but i'm gonna stop while i'm ahead and not fight it because it's not stuck bad yet but if i fight it i know it will be so i'm just gonna stop while i'm ahead stay right here hook a tractor to it and get it up out of here it's not bad yet, but I have a feeling if I fight it, it will be. These little tires are just like pizza cutters. And I mean, this is, it's not dry, but it's not soup either. But this ground, you can see right where I inline ripped it. I've got everything sprayed except for what I inline ripped. And that's the result. <laughs> it is what it is. This is where I was spraying crossways with the ripper tracks, and I'm straight with them right now, and that's why I sunk. Uh, when I was going crossways with them, I could at least stay afloat, but I was turning there. I got to the end, turned around, headed back the other way. Been spraying this diagonal so I could get across it. 
And, uh, yep, that's all she wrote. Is what it is. Um, just gonna have to let this dry out, and it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. This is going in corn. Um, but, I don't know. We'll, we'll just see. It's supposed to rain all week next week, too, so it's not gonna get drier anytime soon, but I just really, really wanna get this stuff killed. Uh, I was able to get the majority of it sprayed, but after that, I'm not gonna try any more today. Um, it's not worth tearing something up. It's just, it's not worth it. So, is what it is.